CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen joins me now for more. So, Tom, as we mentioned, Russia is escalating airstrikes on Kyiv. What is the situation there right now, and what is stopping Russian forces from completely capturing the capital city? Well, Ben, we're hearing reports of new explosions throughout the city of Kyiv. I want to pinpoint some of the areas that have been hit in the past 24 hours. So let's pull up the map here showing the capital, Kyiv, and then in the surrounding urban areas, you can see that there have been at least four strikes. Three of them are residential buildings. One of them is a subway entrance and market. Now, Ben, the thing about this is these are not military targets. These are densely populated civilian areas that have been hit. And the strategy here, as far as military experts speculate, is to surround the city, cut it off from the rest of the country, terrorize the people there, and assert pressure on President Volodymyr Zelensky as both countries continue to hold talks tomorrow. Now, Russia's ultimate goal, as far as we know, is to take control of the capital, and they're appearing to take increasingly aggressive measures to do so. Now, as to why they're moving slower than expected. A lot of that has to do with fierce fighting on behalf of Ukrainian forces, which have managed to fight off some convoys, even reportedly making them turn away from the capital. The Kremlin, simply put, has underestimated what it's up against. But as is the case in any conflict, it's the civilians who are caught in the crosshairs that are suffering the most, Ben. And that is certainly the case here. The U.N. says at least three million Ukrainians have fled the country since Russia's invasion nearly three weeks ago. So where are they going and how successful have these so-called designated humanitarian corridors been in terms of trying to get people out safely? Well, the routes have certainly at times been treacherous for people trying to escape. Some of them have been unsuccessful at getting people out because of attacks, even though they're supposed to be areas that grant safe passage. Now, let's take a look at the map to show where these corridors are and give our viewers a better idea of exactly where these people are going to. You have one down here in the south from the city of Mariupol. You also have five up here in the north, headed in the general direction south to the city of Poltava. You also have three more just outside of Kyiv. Now, let's start with the city of Mariupol that has been encircled by Russian troops with a blockade in place. Now, under the, uh, until the last 24 hours, rather, there weren't any successful evacuations. The city council there says that an estimated 20,000 people have now been able to flee. Now let's focus up in the north, where these routes up here, there are a lot of people traveling and fleeing from the violence. I want to focus in on the city of Sumy. Now, in this area, uh, there has been intense, intense, fierce fighting. People have been fleeing south. And the International Red Cross reports that 100 buses full of people have been able to leave the city, Ben. So some good news for them, but still a lot of people left behind. Good news indeed. Uh, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, he's going to address members of the U.S. Congress on Wednesday. W what are we expecting his message will be? Well, he's going to speak for 15 minutes, and he's expected to renew his calls for a no-fly zone over Ukraine, as well as more fighter jets for the Ukrainian military. President Biden has so far opposed a no-fly zone because of concerns that it would drag the U.S. into a broader conflict. But as you'll remember, Ben, Congress recently approved $13.6 billion in aid for Ukraine, and President Biden is also expected to deliver a speech tomorrow to demonstrate how the U.S. will continue to help. Ben? All right, Tom Hansen, thank you for laying that all out for us.